Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. John's. It's a great day for our church as we're going to welcome into the fellowship of the church 19 people, 18 confirmands, and one person being received from the Roman Catholic tradition into our church. So I'm glad that you're here today. It's a, it's a wonderful day. It's great for my own family because I have a daughter that's going to be confirmed. And we have our um, some of our oldest friends in the world uh, from our days going to Kansas City to attend seminary when I was 21 years old, and we've remained friends with them, and Scott and Quan are with us. So if you want to know any uh, stories about your priest or, uh, or my wife, you could go to them after the service. I'm sure they would love to tell you those stories. Um, as always, I encourage you to look through the parish announcement section. Wonderful things that are going on today. Um, we are uh, having the in gathering for the United Thank Offering. This is a offering that's above and beyond our own offerings that we that we do across the Episcopal Church, and these monies are put together and given as grants to people in need. If there's a natural disaster, for instance, when I lived in Kansas City and we had some tornadoes come through, the United Thank Offering gave grants to churches and to individuals to help them. So it's a wonderful way to, to kind of pay it forward. And, and so that's a thing that we're celebrating today. But there's information about our youth mission trip. So young people and uh, parents, grandparents, please pay attention to that. Our own David Charles Campbell is going to be uh, leading the Episcopal Church women uh, on Tuesday, May 1st, and, and uh, doing a presentation. So all kinds of great things that are taking place. But the most important thing that we always do here at St. John, St. John's is worship God, and so I'm glad you're here today to do that. Welcome.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's all of us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow in his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? about himself or about someone else. Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. who gives us minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve. Amen. Amen. What a great joy and blessing it is to be with all of you here at St. John's, especially in Easter, to see the church still full. In lots of places, you know, the church is full on Easter, and the rest of the time it's not quite so much, but not here at St. John's. More importantly, what a great day of joy and blessing in that we will confirm 19 people into Christ's body, the church, and receive another. That's enough for you all to rejoice in this day on its own, to continue to draw people into the risen life, enough for you to say, Christ is risen. We who are baptized into Christ are called to be Easter people, and you all know because you're here today that Easter is not a day, it's a season, right? Easter tide. And so that's the reflection of this season of Easter tide. Our work, meditation, and prayer are about how we live out the calling to be people of the resurrection. So it is, finally, you know, after some fits and starts, snowflakes and cold, and turn the heat on and turn the air conditioning off and things like that, that a glorious springtime is finally here in the Roanoke Valley. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Azaleas, red buds, and dogwood are now in full bloom. And there is no way, especially as a Christian, that you can take in all the beauty that's now blooming around us and not proclaim, Christ is risen. Now, does that mean that the immense beauty of this season, that everything is all right in the world? No, it certainly does not. But it does signal something. It signals something. It signals God's great renewing creative energy. And it signals the deep redemptive power of the risen Christ. And that signal is always calling us out into something new and something transformative. It points us forward. It's about our mission and ministry in the world in Jesus' name. Springtime. Easter tide literally draws us outside. Now, if you're like me, you've been looking around in your yards for all the signs of spring blooming. My azaleas are just going nuts, and I don't do anything to them. Those are the best kind of plants. 
They were just gorgeous, and I just uh, can say, look at all my azaleas. <laughs> now, perhaps you're doing this also assessing, you know, any winter damage, you know, clearing out old dead matter, making some plans for fertilizing, weeding, and planting. I got a new weed eater, and I just was using my chainsaw uh, to clear out some larger branches that had fallen over the winter. And like me, you might have even planted something, right, last summer or last fall that you're now checking to see if it's growing. <coughs> we planted last fall a new cherry tree, and I planted a gardenia bush. Martha thinks I should quit trying to plant gardenia, that they never will grow, but <coughs> I think it will sooner or later. The tree took some work last fall. You know, it, we had to stake it up a lot, and we sprayed it for all kinds of bugs. But right now, it's currently producing some of the most sublime little pink and white flowers. The gardenia, well, not so much. I can't tell if it's done for or not. Maybe some of you who grow gardenia can give me some tips. It's half green, it's half brown. I'm thinking about digging it up and starting over in that spot. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch of me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. And my wife Martha just brought home a small peony. She loves peonies, and I'm pretty certain that that peony is going to displace the gardenia. <laughs> Maybe it's time, really, to uproot that unproductive gardenia, you know, cast it into the outer darkness of the trash pile. I don't know. I might be able to talk her into a different space and prune it and feed it to see if it will change its ways. It's a fair challenge, and I am a hopeful gardener. Not a very good one, but hopeful. Jesus uses images that he knows we can understand and learn from. And then, just as he did with those first disciples, he points that teaching in our direction for our consideration. We are to be theologians, you know, to think about it. He sets these intense images between God's heart and our hearts. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Yikes. Take it easy, Jesus. Is Jesus threatening us on this beautiful Easter morning? Not really, but he does mean to get our attention. Does he have your attention? See, Jesus is very determined about the transforming discipleship that he invites us to enter into, a thing that we will signal with these confirmations this morning. Because you see, the Holy Spirit moves like a strong wind, not a faint autumn breeze. What is this then, what is this discipleship supposed to look like? What is its shape? How do we grow into ever greater fruitfulness? Well, this morning we hear Luke tell us of Philip's encounter with the Ethiopian eunuch as an example of practicing our discipleship in the name of the risen Christ. He puts it out there for us to consider. Here's the pattern. It's another Easter season baptismal story. So following the resurrection, those big heady days, all of those disciples and apostles, like Philip, are convicted to preach the good and spread this good news of the risen Christ. And the first thing that Philip does is to follow the Holy Spirit's direction for him to go, right, go. And notice that the Holy Spirit sends him along a wilderness road. Not a nice new black top road with lines on it, but a wilderness road. He's not sent along an easy road. Next in the story, he pays attention, and he goes up to engage a complete stranger. And this eunuch is a stranger that would have been well outside of any of Philip's normal meetings. As a eunuch, and as a foreigner, 
This man would have been isolated and cut off from many social circles. And again, notice that Philip doesn't just, you know, saunter up to this new encounter with this odd stranger. He runs. He runs. And then he enthusiastically leads him in a Bible study. Right? Now, how many of you lately have run up to a complete stranger and led them in Bible study? All right, well, that's what you're supposed to be doing. And so as they travel down this road together, a complete stranger and Philip, they have a conversation about Jesus and his ministry, about his being the anointed Messiah. They are being theologians. They are talking about God. And then this eunuch says to Philip, look, here's water. What is to pre prevent me from being baptized? Now, that's not just a casual, throwaway question. What is to prevent me from being baptized? I mean, duh, there's water. We could do it. What the eunuch is asking is, am I included? Is there anything that would keep me from being baptized? Because I know I'm a eunuch, and I'm not from here, and I'm sort of outside the laws of the church, and the bishop might not approve. And What does Philip say? He basically responds, well, absolutely nothing. Nothing prevents you from being included in the risen Christ. And so Philip pushes aside all conventional societal norms and prejudices in order to baptize. The Ethiopian eunuch right there on the spot gets out, they get out of the chariot together and they go right into the water and they become one in Christ. Brothers, this newly baptized convert to the gospel goes away rejoicing that's the real heart of the story. There is conversion. There's newness. There's joy. Now, in just a few moments, these young people and several older people will come forward to confirm their baptisms and commit to a continued journey as disciples of the risen Christ. And we talked about that between the services. We talked about what it would mean for them to be disciples, apostles, that might go out and lead, especially those young people. We older people sorely need their vision as we're seeing more and more. We pray for them. We will say that we will support them. And then we will participate in this joyous moment because we will remember our own baptisms. We will renew our own covenantal promises to be Jesus' disciples in the world. We will mean to keep our promises, I hope. The baptismal covenant that the church proclaims throughout Eastertide has all the prescription that we need to respond and practice resurrection as Philip does. Right? We pledge to say our prayers. We pledge to break bread together and worship, all coming together and gathering around this table. We promise to love our neighbors. We promise to spread the gospel by word, you know, go out there, find a stranger, spread the gospel, and example, do good things. And we pledge to respect the dignity of others, striving for justice and peace, and we ask God's help in doing it. Shaping our lives by those baptismal promises is how we stay connected to the true vine that is Jesus. This is how we grow, how we grow into healthy, strong plants that produce good fruit for ourselves and for others. So let us commit to not becoming indifferent and unproductive plants that must be shoveled up and discarded along with all the dead winter sticks. For God's sake and for the world, let us enjoy and learn from the splendor of this flowering Easter season. And may we be ever growing and fruitful in our zeal for the mission and ministry of the gospel. You see, Jesus is counting on us. Jesus said, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Amen.
try the microphone again. Seems to be okay. All right. A great problem to have, to have to organize so many. The candidates will now be presented. Do all of you reaffirm your renunciation of evil? I do. Do you renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Will all of you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We will. So standing, let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for these persons who have renewed their commitment to Christ. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Send them into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself, and that by the sealing of your Holy Spirit you have bound us to your service. Renew in these your servants the covenant you made with them at their baptism, Send them forth in the power of that Spirit to perform the service you set before them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
Defend, O Lord, your servant Mary Martha with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant James with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Robert with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Aidan with your heavenly grace that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Elizabeth with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you can put it, bring it up and down, you know. Don't you worry. Defend, O Lord, your servant Caroline with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Grace with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Anne Marie with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. You can put your hand on her if you want. Yeah. Defend, O oh Lord, your servant Abigail with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Korabeth with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Ethan with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Jack with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Henry with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Joe with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever 
and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Brandon with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Joni with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant Fairlight with your heavenly grace, that she may continue yours forever, and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more, until she comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. Defend, O Lord, your servant David with your heavenly grace, that he may continue yours forever and daily increase in your Holy Spirit more and more until he comes to your everlasting kingdom. Amen. And we recognize you as a member of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and we receive you into the fellowship of this communion. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, let your fatherly hand ever be over these your servants. Let your Holy Spirit ever be with them, and so lead them in the knowledge and obedience of your word, that they may serve you in this life and dwell with you in the life to come. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If you all would turn and face the congregation, let us welcome those newly initiated with our applause. <laughs> the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace and welcome. Well, let me cut off my microphone here. Well, once again, it's a, a great joy to have everyone here today. It's, it's always wonderful when our bishop is with us and I, I, his wife Martha is with us as well. I hope you'll stay um, following this. We're going to have some time of, of, of reception uh, to, to just to be able to be together. We were going to do it outside. Apparently, winter came back a little more than they wanted because uh, they're going to move the reception indoors. But um, we also welcome Melissa Haysmith from the Bishop's staff. She's the Archdeacon for our diocese. And if you don't know exactly what a deacon does, um, she represents uh, the church to the world and the world to the church. And so she's very much um, involved in social outreach. Um, and so them being here allows us as St. John's to remember that we're not alone. And, and, and the, the breadth of the church, not only in this area, in southwestern uh, Virginia, but indeed around the world. 
Now, one of the things that we get to do as St. John's is, is, is pay it forward and to give of ourselves in, in big ways. And one of the primary ways that we do that is by giving of our resources to the, the work in this diocese. And so I'm going to have our, our senior warden, John Levin, make a presentation on our behalf to the bishop. Bishop Mark, uh, welcome to St. John's. Thank you. It is a pleasure always to have you with us. My pleasure. Uh, it is a, uh, a happy privilege to tell you that our gift, our pledge to the diocese for 2018 is $162,048. It represents the, uh, the resources of all of the people who support this parish, and it's a pleasure to pass it to you. Thank you, John. One of the other ways that we uh, give of ourselves is by helping um, with the bishop's discretionary fund. As you can imagine, overseeing a diocese, there's many um, needs that just come along for which there otherwise would not be resources to deal with. And so all of the loose offering today, and if any gifts that you would give on a check that say bishop's fund, that would be sufficient, uh, will go to helping his ministry to those in need. Bishop. Thank you, Eric. Uh, I just want to thank you all again for your generous stewardship, and I mean both your financial stewardship, which is great. Uh, you're one of the leaders in this diocese. You are, in fact, the leader uh, as regards the financial uh, contributions that allow us to share the gospel all over the 55 congregations that make up southwestern Virginia. Uh, but I also thank you for your stewardship of time and talent because so many of you, including your clergy, are leaders in this diocese and help us in that mission as well. The discretionary fund does all kinds of things. You all have just had a delegation go to Haiti and one of the things, just I like to give at least one example, I'm using some discretionary funds, a few thousand dollars, um, to buy about 60 voice recorders for blind children at the St. Vincent School for Disabled Children in Haiti that um, your rector and uh, delegation attend, uh, saw when you were down there. So it's one of the ways that we can not only uh, spread the good news and reach out to people in our diocese, but also uh, w well beyond ourselves all the way down into Haiti. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Claim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died for us and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup, we praise you and we bless you. We praise, we praise you, you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. 
and grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Philip and John, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We pray you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that God is good, the gifts of God for the people of God. the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
In the name of God and of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one cup. One cup. Thank you both. to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing, mercy, and grace of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forever. Amen. Amen.